Hello everyone, I'm Kevin, otherwise known as Foreign BX257, here to bring you another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review, and today I'll be taking a look at the G.I. Joe's Arctic Attack Soldier, the 1988 Blizzard. Now, Blizzard doesn't make any animated appearances, nor does he make any comic book appearances, which is actually kind of strange because you would think that he would have at least be included in the old Marvel comic G.I. Joe spin-off, G.I. Joe Special Missions number 20, which was dedicated to Arctic action. But no, nothing there either. However, he was a playable character in the 1991 NES G.I. Joe video game. Nice pink skis there, Blizzy. Another interesting thing about this character is his real file name, Gregory M. Natale. Natale being Italian for Christmas. So that's about as close to a Christmas episode as we're going to get on this channel. Blizzard comes with a lot of accessories, three of which are actually meant for his mobility in an Arctic environment. But first we'll take a look at his weapons. He comes with what the contents list on the card refers to as a machine gun of all things. Um, I'm incredulous because it to me looks more like a submachine gun. Of course a lot of the details are all obscured by what is supposed to be a cloth wrapping in order to help this uh, uh, maintain its functionality in a cold environment. But to me this big thing on the back here looks like a uh, collapsed shoulder stock. And even though it has a really long barrel, you can see details like um, the ammo clip, the, uh, the ammo magazine, sticking out of the grip here. That's very common to submachine guns. And of course, it even has a tiny little sculpted uh, grip safety button here. Again, that's pretty common to submachine guns, like the Uzi, for instance. He also comes with a pistol. Again, it's a little hard to see what uh, if this was based on a real-world uh, arm, but simply because of the uh, wrapping, of course, obscures the detail. Oh, one interesting little detail that was sculpted in, which is really fascinating, is the fact that it has this little um, uh, tab sticking out. And that's meant to be an ejection extended chute here. So this uh, extends the ability for it to uh, pop out the casings after it's being fired. As a matter of fact, the uh, submachine gun slash machine gun has that too, right here. Very interesting detail. He also comes with a removable helmet. with painted on goggle details. He also has his fur around the rim, which I think is supposed to be a uh, uh, ear muffs or something. Next, we'll take a look at his first mode of transportation, his skis. These are really nice, kind of, I guess, aerodynamic type of uh, a shape here with nice little uh, details on the tips here. He also comes with a pair of ice shoes. Of course, they just have a peg, like the skis, to peg on to his feet. Now I can go over an icy environment if you want. And finally, he comes with a backpack. Now the backpack has pegs on both the front 
and on the back. So instead of having the ice shoes on here, you can also have the skis on here as well. And it's not exactly an either or, or. It doesn't really say this on the instructions, but with some uh, finagling, you can actually put the ice skis on the other side here as well. So you can carry both the skis and the ice shoes if you don't want them to have either on his feet. And the third mode that I uh, mentioned, if we take all this off again, you'll notice that this thing has handles, almost like um, bike handles on here. And while they are uh, kind of removable, they're not, they're not meant to be. As a matter of fact, I would actually, uh, I might actually think about gluing these in here because they're, they're not supposed to move or pop out like that. Unfortunately, they're often, you'll often find this on the aftermarket with uh, one or both of these kind of popped out. But this turns into a little attack sled. It's a... Uh, I'm not, I'm not sure if these spikes are supposed to be weapons or maybe radio antennas or something. I suppose that's up to your imagination. But on the bottom side, or the side with the back peg, you're supposed to put the uh, skis on there. And you're just supposed to rest it down like that. And the figure can go on here and have the figure's hands grip the uh, bars like that. And he has his own little attack sled or kind of a toboggan. I'm not sure if this is supposed to be um, powered or not. I'm not sure if this thing on the bottom here is supposed to be a rocket engine or what. It's, uh, it's not really stated. Personally, I don't think that this thing should really be powered. It's probably more like a toboggan with uh, the handlebars acting as a steering or even um, just brakes. One interesting thing I, I found out about the uh, instructions after reading them, it expressly states that you should put his helmet on. I guess even action figures have to be uh, safe, right? Taking a look at the detail on his arm. It actually took me a while to find one that wasn't kind of partially rubbed off because it's a very intricate design and quite frankly I didn't even know what it was until I was really um, taking a very good look at it. But it's a red shield with a thunderbolt in front of that and a silhouette of a polar bear on top of all that. And here's Blizzard with my other Arctic figures that I currently have. I do have to admit that uh, <laughs> Iceberg's blue really stands out. And yeah, he um, Blizzard really does have a lot of brown and a lot of black on him as well. But I think Earth Tones really work well with the white Arctic environment. The figure is fairly easy to find on the aftermarket. So you shouldn't be paying quite a lot for this figure. Even with complete with all of its accessories, he shouldn't be really an expensive figure. And this is just an alternate look at how you can place accessories on his backpack. If this figure looks familiar to you, but you don't remember the head sculpt looking like this, then you might have had an Arctic Assault Guile from the 1994 Street Fighter The Movie line. Hasbro reused the mold, but confusingly painted him in a very similar paint scheme to the original 1988 Blizzard figure, unlike many of their other reuses. Nice baby blue skis there, Jean-Claude. Here's some interesting trivia. In Brazil, Blizzard was a cobra, just like Snake Eyes. Even though the figure was no different than the retail release over here, the only real variation is in the packaging. Here's a look at the file card, and I'll probably put a translation up on my Facebook page if you're curious. 
Speaking of really bizarre variations of this figure, Europe actually got a second version of Blizzard included in the Tiger Force subline. And oh, well, you know what? Timur of Half the Battle did a better review of this thing than I ever would, so check his review out. Blizzard here takes over from Iceberg, the 1986 figure, or if you want to include Battle Force 2000, the 1987 Avalanche figure as well. Of course, he didn't replace Iceberg in the comic book, as Iceberg had many more appearances where Blizzard did not have any. And of course, the 1989 Stalker took over from Blizzard, who again had more appearances in the comic books versus zero for Blizzard. With his ability to store his skis on his backpack as well as his uh, ice shoes, he makes a great update to the 1983 Snow Job figure, who is also one of the most well-equipped of the Arctic figures. I really like the sculpt on this figure, the knee pads and these pads on his thighs. Unfortunately, he only has one uh, equal pad on his upper arm. Kind of wish it was on the other arm there. To give him more of an armored look, it gives him more of an aggressive, kind of a ready for combat look. Something that I would expect from the infantry who are stationed in, in the Arctic. Sort of a patrolman, if you will. Rather than the specialist that the other figures were. Of course, with his helmet on and none of his facial hair sort of showing through, you don't really know who this guy is. He could be a generic figure. And I think that's great for army building. On top of that, you have a choice of whether he comes with skis or the ice shoes or you could just have him with the combined Arctic attack sled. There's many ways that you can use this figure if you just want him as an army builder. Adding to the army building potential of this figure, he does have kind of a generic looking face sculpt. And while by no means is it a bad face sculpt, I kind of like it myself, it doesn't really have a, a interesting expression. But then again, you don't want that for an army builder. Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.